Hey, it's Dr. Karen Tang, and today we're talking about a TikTok I made that went a little viral, and the topics I discussed in which is why there are more than two genders, and the science behind biological sex development, and why biological sex and gender are different things. If you're new to my channel, I'm a board-certified gynecologist and minimally invasive surgeon, and I'm trying to use this platform to cover issues like reproductive health and sex ed, and to get conversations going about things that I think don't get talked about enough. And so hit like and subscribe. Um, I want this to be a conversation, so please, obviously, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. And here we go. So some of you may have seen that a TikTok I made kind of went viral. <laughs> And I made the video in response to a politician who had made a sign that said there are two genders, trust the science. This is part of a larger pattern of transphobic attacks and delegitimizing the idea that somebody could even be transgender. Now, I don't want to turn this into a political video, but as a doctor who takes care of transgender and gender non-binary patients on a regular basis and knows how subject this community is to violence and discrimination and lack of access to even basic healthcare sometimes, um, I couldn't stand by and not speak out. Particularly making a statement like it's science is grossly, grossly misleading and inaccurate. So in this video, we're going to do a couple of things. Basically, we're going to define biological sex and gender because those terms are incredibly misused sometimes, and also to show the scientific complexity, particularly within biological sex, and also to show how culturally uh, gender is expressed in many different ways and is a continuum across different cultures and ethnicities. I'm going to give you guys a couple of resources and links to continue learning about these issues because obviously it's way more complex than I can ever convey in a couple of minutes in a YouTube. The idea is to get you guys interested and engaged and wanting to learn more and wanting to continue these conversations after you finish watching this video. And at the end, um, I wanted to share some things I learned that I didn't know about uh, before researching this video about uh, different gender identities in cultures throughout the world. And I thought that was completely fascinating. So the big question is, what is the difference between biological sex and gender? So typically when people make really simplistic statements like there are two, they're saying that there is male and female. So oftentimes what they're referring to is biological sex, which if you break it down, consists of a couple of things. Genetics, so what chromosomes do you have? Do you have XX or XY sex chromosomes? What gonads do you have? Do you have uh, ovaries or do you have testes? What internal genitalia do you have? Do you have a uterus, tubes, and vagina? Or do you have seminiferous tubules and vas deferens? And what external genitalia do you have? Do you have a uh, clitoris and vulva? Or do you have a penis and scrotum? Also, what hormone status do you have? Do you have more testosterone? Or do you have more estrogen and progesterone? Whereas gender has to do with identity, and even in an anthropological sense, in the role that someone plays within a society. We'll talk more about gender and gender identity and expression later in the video. But first, we'll start with biology because biology is the more straightforward and clear-cut one, right? Wrong. Because there's a whole group of conditions called disorders or differences of sex development, or DSD, what we formally called intersex conditions. Now, these are incredibly complicated conditions. Um, in fact, I felt like I was preparing for my board exams again when I was trying to research for this video just to get some of the details right. Um, I'm not a geneticist. I'm not an endocrinologist. I'm assuming most of you guys are not as well. I just wanted to give a sense of the complexity and a little bit of an explanation as to how some of the differences in development can lead to some of these different outcomes. And I also wanted to just kind of raise awareness that these ex issues exist. And I got a lot of comments on the TikTok about things like, oh, these conditions are so rare and like almost never do they happen. Well, it's actually a lot more common than you might think. When I was researching and learning more, I discovered that up to one in a thousand or one in 4,000 um, children at birth may have a DSD that requires evaluation. So what quote unquote typically happens in development that would lead to someone becoming biological male or female? Now, before I start, I did want to say again, I'm not going to go into like crazy nitty gritty genes and things like that. You know, I just fully admit I don't have that level of expertise, and I also don't want to lose everyone. Um, it's not a video about genetics. For those of you who aren't particularly interested in the biology, please feel free to skip to later in the video. I don't want you to feel like you're being trapped and forced to watch anything, um, but I hope uh, most of you will find it interesting. So first we start with chromosomes. Most of you remember from high school biology that the typical female pattern is XX and male pattern is XY. You inherit these one from each parent. So most importantly is on the Y chromosome, there is one particular gene called the SRY gene or sex determining region on the Y chromosome gene that that if you have it, then your gonads will become testes. If you don't have it, they will become ovaries. The testes then also will do two things. One is secrete more testosterone, which is the quote unquote male hormone, and also a substance called mullerian inhibiting substance, which would then inhibit development of the female internal genitalia, things like the uterus and vagina. What your external genitalia look like depends on whether there's more or less testosterone. So if you have more testosterone, they will look like a penis and a scrotum. If there is less testosterone, then it will look 
look like a clitoris and a vulva. So actually they start with the same basic structures that actually just change to look different based on whether there's more or less testosterone. Pretty interesting. So you can have issues that develop at almost every step in this process that then will affect sexual differentiation. Let's start with SRY. So you can have somebody who's genetically male with XY chromosomes, but the SRY is missing or malfunctioning. And that person may go on to develop ovaries and then female sexual characteristics, or they may even have both some ovarian tissue and some testicular tissue. There may also be issues with hormone production. There's a large group of conditions called congenital adrenal hyperplasia or CAH, where patients may have a large amount of adrenal testosterone uh, that develops because of an issue with sex hormone production. And so they are oftentimes genetically female XX uh, with what appears to be male genitalia because of the presence of a large amount of testosterone. In the video, I discussed a condition called 5-alpha reductase deficiency. People with the condition actually have an issue converting testosterone to a stronger version of itself called DHT or dihydrotestosterone. If you lack that in utero, you actually do not have the virilization or masculinization of the external genitalia. So these uh, people have uh, genetic XY uh, chromosomes, they have testes, but they just don't have the version of testosterone that normally leads to the external genitalia looking masculine. So they may have female appearing or ambiguous genitalia. But then in puberty, testosterone levels will rise and the external genitalia will actually start to look more masculine and they will also develop facial hair and body hair. So overall in these conditions, there can be a discrepancy between the genetics, the gonads, the hormone status, the external genitalia. As you can imagine, this is an enormously complex issue. Because of how complex everything is, we're not even going to be able to scratch the surface of the lived experience of the children and the individuals and families who are affected by these conditions. I did want to include some links below uh, in the description uh, so you can learn more about DSDs, including a scientific paper, as well as an organization called DSD Families, which provides support and resources and educational uh, information, so please check those out. Now talking about gender, um, again, a caveat, I'm obviously not a gender scholar. Um, I may get some of these terms wrong. Uh, obviously, please correct me if there is anything kind of glaringly wrong, but I wanted to kind of try and discuss some of these issues, especially um, contrasted with biological sex. In general, gender has to do with identity and social norms. And so in the video, I mentioned that gender is socially constructed. Now in some of the snarkier comments on my video, a lot of people were like, well, I thought you were talking about science. Now you're just giving opinion. And I would say these are the literal definition of gender. I'm gonna put on my glasses and read some of these definitions. Oxford Dictionary, either of the two sexes, especially when considered with reference to social and cultural differences rather than biological ones. The term is also used more broadly to denote a range of identities that do not correspond to established ideas of male and female. And also the WHO, or the World Health Organization, I thought this was beautifully phrased. Gender refers to characteristics that are socially constructed. As a social construct, gender varies from society to society and can change over time. Gender interacts with but is different from sex, which refers to the different biological and physiological characteristics of males, female, and intersex persons, such as we talked about, chromosomes, hormones, and reproductive organs. Gender and sex are related to but different from gender identity. Gender identity refers to a person's deeply felt internal and individual experience of gender, which may or may not correspond to the person's physiology or designated sex at birth. Boom. So our Western or American concept of gender being perfectly binary, male and female, is extremely narrow, especially compared with other cultures from throughout the world and throughout history, uh, where gender is considered to be more fluid. And again, at the end of the video, I'll leave you with a resource that's really amazing, and you can learn about different cultures from throughout the world, and even within the United States, where there's a non-binary or more fluid concept of gender identity. But first, a few basic definitions. Cisgender means that there is a match between the gender that someone was assigned at birth and the, the gender that they identify with. Transgender means that there is a difference and the gender that someone identifies with is not the gender that they were assigned at birth. Important to note that transgender is an adjective, not a noun or a verb, and that the nomenclature is that if somebody is assigned female at birth and identifies as a male, that they are a trans man or trans masculine or trans mask. And finally, there's a category of being gender non-binary, and this is obviously a large category and has many different gradations. Someone may not fully identify with either male or female or feel that they have aspects of both gender genders. Um, there could be gender fluidity where they transition between different aspects of gender identity. And again, this non-binary or fluid concept of gender has precedence in many different cultures throughout the world. So that brings me to this resource I've mentioned. So actually PBS has an interactive map of gender diverse cultures throughout the world that you can actually explore on their website. And so I thought this was totally fascinating. I learned so much from reading about different cultures all around the world and even in the United States and in indigenous communities that there is this concept of a third gender or of gender fluidity between different parts of life, um, people who occupy different 
gender roles that are typically thought of as masculine or feminine um, and interchanging those roles. So I really encourage everyone to explore it a little bit more. I think we all need to educate ourselves more on this topic. And finally, I just wanted to talk about, well, what is even the point of this? Like, why is this important? And it's simply because transgender and gender non-binary people are people, they are human beings, and they are under attack. They're subject to unprecedented rates of discrimination, violence, depression, anxiety. They may lack even access to basic health care. Something as simple as ensuring basic protections against discrimination and violence is being politicized and science is being used to justify that sort of discrimination. And so I think all of us, especially those of us in the medical field, really need to stand behind people who are transgender, gender non-binary, those with DSD, and the entire LGBTQ plus community because it's the right thing to do. So thank you guys for sticking with me through this video, including all the technical stuff. Um, also to everyone who showed love to the original TikTok, I am so grateful and appreciative. Thank you so much. Um, please like and subscribe um, and also share this video. Obviously it's a much more deep dive than the TikTok ever could be. And please continue to have this conversation. Please continue to talk about this issue. We all need to keep educating ourselves. We all need to keep doing better for the LGBTQ community. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.